The sun is already setting by the time we get out of Milk Hall. Gray snow flutters down from the gloomy clouds above. Arashima-san indicates the Senator member list he's holding. I don't know. Thanks for taking care of it. Sure. Sounds good. You should get her under police protection as quickly as possible. Arashima-san nods and disappears into the evening crowd. Well then, they have a lot more time than I expected. Guess I should head home. Yeah, maybe so. Set off at a brisk pace along the slush-filled roads. Passed by several people who appear to be sending their cultists on my way back. They have sunken cheeks and pallid lips. Their dead eyes are soulless black pits. Have I seen this? No? Okay. As they wander the roads, they scrutinize every person they pass. Looks like they're still searching for Tokiko. My pace quickens. No need to worry. She's safe. That's a Daoshima san. Was that really the case? Practically overflowing with doubts now. Probably haven't evaded the tenacious gazes of those cultists. Cosma. The image of Cosma materialized inside my head. Her voice was heavy with sorrow after we heard Tokiko's confession. As the story wore on, Kazuna's expression grew more taut and glum. No matter what we said to her, she remained stone-faced and unresponsive. After a short while, she said, leaving the room. Toji requested to go along since the air was dangerous, but Kazuna shook her off. Oh, god damn it. She ends up getting kidnapped by Akao anyway, doesn't she? <laughs> She's like, I just want to be on my own. Walks away and does her own thing, and then fucking Akao gets her anyway, right? I wonder if she's returned to the room by now. So just subordinate sitting there in the entryway with a bored look on his face. He's a tough looking young street yeah, yeah, Snack, starving, <laughs> I'm not rich, too bad. <laughs> Temporary guard, anything yeah. happened. Yeah, no suspicious fellows. No cultists. What about Kazna? She back? Ah, I'm going to go back a little bit. Is that the woman of Shugo? It's a beautiful woman. It's not a beautiful woman. I was a little bit happy. Come on, what are you talking about? It's not like I'm... What's wrong with you? I wouldn't go that far, but... Mumble out an unintelligible answer the man continues. What? Just to go out and get some He tilts his head casually, somewhat puzzled. Damn it, Kazna. What's she trying to pull? No, Shugo san! Don't have to hang around here anymore. Go and look for Kazna. If she's shopping, then she should be close by. Spread up the stairs after yelling an order to him. And then. Tokiko's just gonna knock us out again anyway. Okay. Lamps in the hallway aren't lit, probably because the sun just went down. I feel my way along in the dark. An indescribable feeling of anxiety starts to well up within my chest. Cause I'm so good natured, but she left an, uh, an injured Tokiko here all by herself and hasn't come back. Something just falls out of place. Normally I just laugh it off, but it steadily blossoms into a quiet feeling of panic. At the end of the second floor hallway, I'm enveloped in complete darkness. The silence itself is deafening. Can't sense anybody inside my room. Wait, what was that? A soft noise. I can't tell who it is. However, that strange feeling of unease inside me begins to solidify. I seal myself and place my hand on the doorknob. It's unlocked. Fuck. She's swinging from the ceiling in the center of the room. What the? My mind goes blank. Why the hell did she do this? What happened? Fuck is this thing dangling in front of my eyes? Body hanging from the ceiling beam sways slightly, making a soft creaking noise. Her eyes are bulging, her tongue's unfurled over her chin, and the ropes eating into her neck. I'm getting dizzy. My pulse races. I slump down to my knees, finding it hard to breathe. I try gulping in a large breath of air. The place reeks of shit. The top of me underneath her is stained black. It's been a while since she's died, I think to myself, half dazed. My vision's fading. Flashes of light go off behind my eyelids. Every time I drop breath, the rank odor of human excrement makes me- Where the hell did Kazna go? Why was she not waiting here? My mind races. Ugh. I look up. 
Shigusa Tokyo. Hanged. Of course, after she had spilled the details on everything, she couldn't live with herself for whatever reason. Large number of people add their voices to the hubbub inside my room. These men are investigators from the Wayno police station. Came over here after Toji's subordinate tipped them off. What happened after that is fuzzy. My memory's full of holes. Tokyo's corpse is no longer suspended in the center of my room. Ruled an unnatural death, she was sent to forensics. She should be arriving at the station about now. I don't know any of the finer details at this point. Everything's happening so fast, I can hardly even keep up. Shigusa Tokyo took her own life. Kazuki Kazuna disappeared. I just don't understand what the hell's going on. Why did Tokyo commit suicide? Why did Kazuna suddenly vanish? What happened to both of them during the few hours I was with Arashima-san? At that moment, as I stand there stupefied, snippets of a nearby conversation happen to reach my ears. もう Suicide note. I put another conversation before my brain can even register what I'm doing. Did she really write that down as the reason why? However. Yaganuma cuts me off. His scoring painfully obvious. My house, asshole. Oh, Better amazement, Arashima san nods in agreement. Arashima san fix, uh, fixes me with a cold stare. I wonder how long I've been standing here in the falling snow. After analysis of the crime scene was finished, the detectives quickly vacated the premises, concluding that it was not a murder. Arashima san, what's going on with Senri? Quickly ask after catching Arashima san, he's about to return to Ueno Station. Yeah, so He averts his eyes from me and says, What did you just say? Sure you get a good night's rest today. Yeah, after everything that went down, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna sleep like a fucking baby. After thanking me in a way that sounded like he's criticizing me at the same time, Arashima-san leaves. Brick. Brick. The snow continues to fall. I don't feel like going back into the room where Tokiko died, so I just stand outside the front of the apartment staring into nothingness when... I... Shugo. I hear Toji's voice calling out to me. Hey. I'd ask Toji to do something for me. Search for Kazuna. How'd it go? Did you find Kazuna? Can't stop the enthusiasm creeping into my voice, but all Toji does is shake your head mournfully. Kazna vanished right in front of our very eyes. It was a shock from having seen Tokiko's corpse. Where did Tokiko die after Kazna had left the room? Damn it. I just don't know. The confusion renders me unable to put my thoughts in order. Maybe Arashima san was right after all. There's one ray of light in the darkness. It'd be that Kazuna left on her own accord and didn't fall into the hands of the Senri cultists. Yet. <laughs> she may have not she may have left the house of her own accord, but where she went after that, uh, that doesn't mean she's not in their hands. Kazuna. I wonder how long I've been standing out here in the snow. Shigusa Tokiko ga jisatsu ka. Toji suddenly speaks up. Yeah, I feel the same way. Toji silently stares me down, and... My thought processes freeze for a split second. Hmm. To be perfectly honest, I hadn't even entertain that possibility. What, really? However, 
Now it's impossible. どうしてだもしかしてあのふざけた衣装を信じているのかあんなもの簡単に偽造できるそれくらい分かっているだろう。No, that's not it. Reluctantly addressed Toji has worked herself into a rage. Your sport, it was posted at the door. He's perfectly clear about the fact that nobody entered the room. So, I lost for words, Toji bites her lip. That's right. Words slowly spell out from my mouth. If Tokiko were murdered, it would mean the culprit is Kazna. Bakana! Toji screams at me, irritated. I know, I feel the same way. That's why, as I'm about to finish my sentence by saying it can only be a suicide, Right at that moment, a light bulb goes off deep within the recesses of my brain. Wait, wait, wait. It was the body double. It was the leader. That's who it was. Because the, the guy just thought it was her, right? Because they look so identical. Something's not right. Ah, just a minute, I'm going to go. あれが守護さん、うらやましいですね。綺麗な娘さんじゃないですか。ちょっと元気なさそうだったけど。You know what if? し、守護。Toji eyes me suspiciously. I don't respond. Instead, let my thoughts ramble onward until they reach a conclusion. Damn, I can't believe it was so simple. That's right. If that's the case. 守護。きちんと話してくれ。Exasperated. 一体何のことを言ってるんだ。Toji waves her hand around, demanding an explanation. Now, Jay, I have a favor to ask of you. The Sendry name list I got from you. Show me one of the spare copies for a second. <laughs> Gave my copy to Arashima san as evidence.、Uh, uh. An expression of confusion still on her face, Toji hands me a thick envelope. Thanks. I immediately grab it and start leafing through the papers inside. I find the name I'm looking for far more easily than I had anticipated. What? Blazes? A groan. It's no less shocking, even though I found exactly what I expected to find. Or rather, I see, I see. This is the final piece of the puzzle. I finally found it. We've got to get going ASAP. If my theory is correct, then Cosmo is in grave danger right now. Before that, there's a few things I gotta confirm first, though. I gotta make a few calls, too. Let me a hand, Toji. Haha. <laughs> I wanna get the show on the road fast. <laughs> So she looks at me perplexed. Her eyes are practically begging me for an explanation. Oh, right, right. You're absolutely correct. Shiga Satokiko's death was not suicide. She was murdered so she wouldn't squeal. No, it's probably somebody else. Ooh, a member of the theater troupe, perhaps? That may be one of Takako, not Takako, Akao's underlings? It was just really good costume work? I nod slowly and deliberately. Now, there's someone else calling all the shots. One person lurking in the shadows. Someone else. I mean, other than Yura herself. Right? Or the body double. A heavy breeze whirls around the falling snow. The place is deserted. Branches sway in the wind, creating a low groaning that resonates in my ears. Here we are, beneath the black gate of Senri. Hontoni. I offer a silent nod as reply to Toji's question. It's a race against time. Got no time to waste thinking things over. Thus, Toji and I set foot into the final scene of this bizarre play. As we ascend the long stone staircase, the main hall of worship appears in front of us, covered in snow. It's not a soul to be seen. Last time I visited the Senri compound, I was able to spot some cultists around here. This time, things are different. Torches in the main shrine have been put out, and the interior is almost completely enveloped in darkness. What hasn't changed is that there are braziers burning brightly, lighting up all the areas of the compound. Toji quietly whispers to me. All the better for us. We、we'll、have to deal with them. We got this far without having to force our way in. Toji stares me down suspiciously. Nah, you give me too much credit. Let's just say that it was within the realm of possibility. On the contrary, the way the compound looks right now only lends credence to my suspicions. Toji's red eyes shine grimly. A few hours ago, after making a bunch of calls and getting some new information, I confirmed that he had disappeared. And the place he was headed to was Senri headquarters. His goal was probably to erase all traces of himself from the church. 
same time, he would deal with Kazna, who would become a witness to his crimes. Thing is, if you took her elsewhere, there's nothing I can do at this point. All we can do is pray that she's here and that she's unharmed. That's right. She should have never gotten involved in this. Like me, she should have just moved on with her life. I don't want it to be the end for her. Not in a place like this. There's only one thing I can do. I have to put an end to this and get her out of harm's way. That's right. Back on that day, I had sworn to myself. Man. I'd never make the same mistake again. Aww. Man. The inside is filled with the cloying smoke of incense. All is silent. Candles spaced at regular intervals flicker slightly as they're disturbed by the breeze. I feel my way through the gloom, trying to hide my presence, painfully aware of every step I take. This is the main worship hall for Senthony. I've been here I've been in here a few times before, but it's the first time I've tried sneaking inside. I feel completely lost. It's so dark in here. I'm so nervous I can feel the beads of sweat slowly sliding their way down my back. Having no cultists around is convenient, but I can't be dallying around here forever. He's somewhere here, someplace inside this compound. Gotta rescue Kazuna and get out of here as fast as possible. Hmm, let's see. Stop to ponder things. This building is a lot bigger than it looks on the outside. We should split up and search. I'll go where the Holy Prophet is and you head to the training area over there. Mate. So she barks abruptly, raising a hand to cut me off. Try to focus on the gloom inside the temple. Huh? And we hear the sound of footsteps on the wooden flooring. We don't have time to look for a place to hide. A small light source heads straight for us. It's a man cloaked in cultist regalia holding a candle. The orange glow from the candle illuminates his meek smile. That voice belongs to Ako Ikma. この新域に何のご用でしょうか。あいにく神徒のものは出払っておりまして、ろくにおもてなしもできませんが。He still got that unassuming expression on his face. He doesn't even appear surprised in the slightest to find Toji and me here. I see how it is. You expect us to come here, right? Well done on your part. 予想済み、高城さん。何をおっしゃっているのですか? Aka cocks his head in confusion. Cut the crap, Aka Ikma. Chased all the rank and file followers because you were up to something shady here, right? Like, for instance, a purge of the higher ranking cultists. Am I hitting close to home? His expression, however, does not change. In fact, it's downright creepy. Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> I know everything. I heard it all from Shiga Sotokiko. Say forcefully cutting Akao off mid-sentence. Oh. Oh. Akao's face contorts itself into an expression of glee. I was hiding Shiga Sotokiko for a while, but you already knew that, didn't you? His carefree expression shows no sign of changing. Well, there's a good reason for that. Bastard already knew everything. She told us all before she told us all she knew before you shut her up permanently. Know the truth behind the horrible atrocities you and the church have committed. Jijitsu Akao puts on a mock display of surprise. Why the hell did you murder all those people in order to make the leader's prophecies come true? Why'd you kill Rin and Takako-chan? There's no reason for them to be murdered. However, Akao ignores my questions and says, Yeah, Takashiro-san. Jijitsu wa ittai nan de shou ne? Twisted smile contorts his formerly expressionless mask. What did you say? ほら、よく言うじゃないですか。事実とは、各々の人間が頭の中で作り上げた虚構に過ぎない。壁の染みを見て、人の顔だと思い込むものもいれば、しだれ柳を幽霊と見違えるものもいる。いやいや、そう考
という線も考えられないことはない肝心の仕草さんも死んでしまった今その事実を誰が確かめられるでしょうねえ高城さんそうは思いませんかああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああ根拠のない言いがかりはこの辺にしてお引き取り願いませんかねもうたくさんだ証拠が必要というならこの敷地内からカズナを見つけ出せばいいカズナはどこだどこに隠した光月君がさて何のことでしょう OK I got it I spin around standing here I spin around standing here and talking with Akka isn't going to get us anywhere Let him do what he wants, Dodgy. Let's split up and search for Kazna. Truth is, I'd let down my guard. I've forgotten that under his meek exterior, Akaka was a vicious killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kiki w a k i n g a n a i Here, Akaka was safe from behind. Well, I'm a little bit of 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 a Where on earth was he hiding that? That is also a good question. Terribly inappropriate thought for the,、uh, for the moment flashes through my head. Alright. Anko had something wrapped in cloth dangling from his other hand. The one that wasn't holding the candle. Man, what a stupid way for me to die. I can't even dodge this slash from Anko. I close my eyes. In a moment I'll be dead and my brains will be splattered on the ground. I. should be dead. <laughs> Hoji! Blood splatters near my feet. You're escaping wound on Toji's shoulder. <laughs> Toji slumps to her knees, her lips curled into a weak grimace. Don't you fucking dare. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Shikashi, Yukaida. You son of a bitch. The carefree expression on Akao's face has vanished. In its place is a maniacal twisted grin. Takashiro san, kore desu yo, kore. Sakki anata wa boku no doki o tazne mashte. Onaji koto nan desu yo. Boku da te, ano kata no tame ni yogen no koto. Kito sore na. The paroxysm of pain suddenly grips Akao's shadow of figure. Sore na no ni, ano kata wa. Shin, you saying Koski Yoda wanted you to. Damare! Akao suddenly screams at me. Akao's expression changes for a split second as he roars at me in rage. それなのに、決して僕のことを見ようとしないんだ。僕がどれほど尽くしても、どれほど望みを叶えてやろうとあの方の心からあなたの影が消えることはなかった。いつまでもあなたに執着し、追い求め。So this grudge of his towards Shugo. Has been much longer than just finding out he was investigating. If he is who I think he is, and he goes back as far as the person who bought her from Keichiro, right? It, or is connected to that sanatorium in some way, shape, or form. And he's had his own obsession with Yura for however long. But she's only ever been concerned with Shugo. Definitely, over all these years, he would develop a very、uh, deep hatred for him. Uh huh. And that's even more, lends even more credence to the fact that Urin and Takako got targeted simply because they were close with Shugo. Is that why he killed Urin and Takako chan? Yoda wanted that because I had grown close to them? Oh. Oh, I had not even considered that. Yura asked of it, and Akao simply followed. Oh. Oh. Fuck. Thank god damn, how did we get away with the Hatsune ending then? How does that one just end up happily, happy and carefree? <laughs> 
whatever. Is the reason really that simple? Zimbu. bears his teeth, making himself look like some vengeful demon. His bloodshot vacant eyes roll around in his head. Seeing his visage undergo such a hideous transformation only serves to reinforce my belief. In the end, this man is nothing but a pawn. Oji. She's on her knees next to me, panting fiercely, trying to stem the flow of blood from her shoulder with her hand. Can I leave him to you? The real danger isn't here. You can go look for Kazna. Try to keep him here, please. And that's... Okay, that's why they kidnapped Kazna. Because now, once again, she's someone in the way of Yura's desires, right? Oji grimaces, showing me her hand. It's completely soaked with blood. You look terrible. What a surprise. Oh, by the way, apparently this guy used to be part of the special forces. Yeah, more so than we ever imagined. I just told you once more. So you got any problems with that? After taking a long, hard look at my face, she heaves a big sigh, muttering as though amazed. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's my bad bitch. Great. That's the Aokitoji I know. If they have such a dependable friend in you. Toji's <laughs> lips form themselves into a wry smile. She slowly rises to her feet, supporting her wounded shoulder. Pulls a revolver from her coat and tosses it to me. Hey, what's this for? <laughs> Without me, you need a gun. But what about you? Goddamn right. You do. She shows me her favorite weapon, the Tonfa. Thanks, Doji. I nod and start running. I hear Akao's angry shout from behind me, followed by a bunch of strident clangs from weapons clashing. I don't look back. So much faith I have in my friend. You're goddamn right. You're goddamn right. After running a short while, I finally get out of earshot of the battle. I head for the Holy Prophet's room, passing through hallways painted in red. I look around after entering her room. There's nobody inside. My pulse is racing. I carefully make my way forward in the gloom. The Prophet's sacred seat, separated from the world by a thin sheet of silk gauze. This would be the most convenient place to hide something from other people's eyes. I lift up the silk gauze, trying to calm my pounding heart at the same time. However, what lies behind it is... Nobody's here. All I can do is stand there with my jaw agape, staring into the dimly lit space. My rising impatience can't be contained. I go back outside after completing a search of the interior. What do I do now? Kazan's not inside the main temple. If my worst fears come true, she's been taken somewhere other than the Senator main compound. Or perhaps... There's no time for this. I'm going to convince myself that Kazan isn't here. I should stop my search immediately and go back to help Toji. What do I do? As my mind races in circles, I search aimlessly around the compound until suddenly, at that moment, a revelation suddenly strikes me. I follow the trail of footprints into the woods, relying on the moonlight, reflecting off the snow to guide me on my way. The cold seeps in through the bottoms of my feet with each step I take through the snow. The wind stopped blowing, the silence out here is eerie. Sure enough, a feeling of doubt seizes my heart. Is my destination truly up ahead? I lose all track of time as I push farther and deeper into the snow-covered forest. The forest suddenly gives way to a clearing. My snow-covered path ends at a steep hillside. A dark hole is bored into the center. Can't even see how deep it really goes. There's no mistake. This pit is the place I've been searching for. It's Senri's training facility. A heavy wooden door stands open. I slip through the entrance. A narrow corridor yawns open before me lit by the faint glow of candles. I take a cautious peek inside. Just like the main temple, this place is completely quiet. 
Can't sense anybody else around. Looks like all those priests in training have been moved elsewhere. I wonder if the leader's body double was also moved with them. However, I don't think he would overlook such an obvious witness. At any rate, I suppose there's no need for me to worry about anybody stopping me at the moment. Using the candlelight as my guide, I advance farther in. But as soon as I start walking, I notice something. Was there blood on the floor? It's the odor of human bodies coupled with the overpowering stench of something rotting. Ugh. The cloying scent of incense fills the air, probably to mask that odor. It's making it difficult for me to breathe. The entire hallway reeks. What on earth was this facility used for? The abominable smell makes horrible thoughts run through my imagination. I'm unable to keep my rising anxiety in check. God damn it. I trudge onward, searching for Kazna in the dark. After turning a corner at the end of the hallway, I come across a section of hallway with metal doors lined up on one side. Peek into the room through the barred window installed into the door, checking to see if there's anything out of place inside. It's a Spartan room, outfitted only with a bed and shrine. A lot of the rooms are cluttered with random things, but there's nothing in but there's nothing in particular that catches my eye. However, that offensive rank stench assails my nostrils once again. What the? My breath catches in my throat. Cold sweat breaks out across my forehead. When I look in through the gate, I can see that the floor is stained ominously red. I can't see any more of the room from my current position. Fuck! I reach for the door in my haste. I make several unfruitful swipes for the handle. What I see inside is... Two small bodies. Crumpled together in the center of a pool of blood. Bad bitch right there. Harsh clang of weapons striking the harsh clangs of weapons striking weapon echo around the room. <laughs> Burning pain lances through Toji's uninjured left shoulder. The pain uh, through Toji's injured left shoulder. The pain is too much to bear and her tonfa drops to the ground. The wounds much deeper than she imagined. The flow of blood pumping out of it doesn't stop, and Toji's strength is sapped within a split second. Toji allows herself a bitter laugh inside her heart as she supports her wounded shoulder. Even though it's a request from her friends, job is the odds stacked up overwhelmingly against her. You're goddamn right she will. Fuck yeah, Queen. Akao's lips twist themselves into a scornful grin. <laughs> Akao seems relaxed and carefree in his actions as he mocks Toji, so he's confident of his own superiority. However, Toji says icily in a right with a wry grin on her face. Toji charges at Akao while he's indignant with rage. Pain and blood loss rapidly sapping her body of strength. She closes the distance between herself and Akao. She takes stock of her own condition. At this rate, there's not much time left before her body will cease functioning as she desires. She needs to finish him off and quickly. Akao, Fuck yeah. Toji shouts out a battle cry as she leaps to close the distance between her and her foe. Fuck yeah. I gotta, keep, I gotta keep taking screenshots. Toji's too badass not to. Even though Toji's put all his strength into her attack, Akao easily parries this with his bayonet. Once, twice, large sounds of combat echo around the temple. Toji's weakened attacks aren't able to land a scratch on Akao. Then, an unblocked slash cuts deep into Toji's arm. Damn, not the good arm. At least not the actual arm. Pain lances through her entire nervous system. Toji, hu Toji hunches over and tries to retreat out of range of Akao's bayonet. She's bleeding from cuts all over. Toji's avoided taking any fatal wounds, but now it's only a matter of time before she gets one. Her face is screwed up into a mask of pain. Akao chases after Toji, mocking her all the way. 
仲間に置き去りにされて殺されたあいつでもあわれなのはお前の方じゃないかなあ青木当時もう一度言ってみろ僕が何だって I caught Vance's forward as he tries to provoke his opponent with words. He heads towards the relatively unprotected left side and suddenly lashes out with full force. <gasps> She can't block this. Sonfa is ripped from Tonji's numb hand. I didn't have time to check where it's flown off to as the butt of Akao's rifle slams to her stomach. <laughs> Tonji's dashed against the wall. She crumples onto the Tatami mat beneath. One of the candles mounted on the wall must have fallen during her impact. Its flames begin to spread onto a piece of gauze hanging from the ceiling. Fire races across the thin fabric. Soon it begins to spread across the room. Akko advances through the flames. <laughs> Doji looks around, trying to spot her Thonfa. Luckily, she's able to find it within a second. If she can get her weapon back, she'll be able to engage in close combat with Akko once again. <laughs> Doji murmurs to herself, leaping toward her own weapon. However, she anticipated it. Toji's thigh is pinned to the tatami mat by a knife that Akka was thrown. Oh, Jesus. Of course. Her weapon's been taken away. Now her legs as good as useless. All she should do now is writhe around on the floor. Nah, she's gonna use that knife. Nah, she's gonna use the knife, though. With a mocking smile on his face, Akka sits on top of Toji, who's lying feebly on the ground. He raises the bayonet with deliberate, exasperating slowness. さて、そろそろあなたの相手も飽きましたよ。もう終わりにしましょうか。She lies there, broken and battered. There's nothing else she can do. Toji's in quite a fix now. <laughs> However, strangely enough, Toji's lips form themselves into a smile. Even though she's backed against the wall here, the deep laughter just won't stop. <laughs> それで結局、そこまで尽くして。Akao's hands freeze in place. A harsh groan claws its way out from the depths of Akao's throat. He shifts his rifle to another hand and uses his fist to punch Toji in the face. Akao continues to pummel her mercilessly. Toji hears the sound of her skull cracking. No matter how many times she gets hit, she can't stop laughing. God, you're a bad bitch. Let's see how it is. Toji thinks to herself. It's amazing that just guessing what was in his mind caused him to get so upset. He's definitely not the monstrous type of guy to go about committing all those bizarre murders. That line of reasoning in his mind, he's the one that killed Kosuke Yura. Then... <laughs> Akka, enraged, lifts up his bayonet with both hands and brings it down as hard as he can. <laughs> nah, she ain't dead. Toji isn't able to dodge. <laughs> yep. The fucking knife that he had jammed in her thigh. Toji's final weapon, her trump card, ends up being her hairpin. Oh. Watch, her last words are going to be like, what, you thought I only brought one weapon with me? The deadly blow is thrust straight into Akao's eyeball, into the recesses of his brain. Akao's body shudders as he screams. A large amount of blood starts to drip out of the corner of his mouth. And... He collapses on top of Toji without so much as a twitch afterwards. <laughs> In the burning flames, with the wounded body stretched out on the floor, Toji thinks to herself, Akka was motivated solely by his twisted jealousy and desire for the leader. <laughs> Toji allows herself a wry smile. She's pretty much the same. She harbors a bit of hatred within her own heart for the woman who haunts Shugo's memories. So, Toji gently strokes the cheek of the man who lies dead upon her chest. With a wan smile on her face, Toji slowly closes her eyes. 
The inferno tearing through the temple slowly starts to engulf the entire building. As the heat from the blaze warms her cheeks, Toji's consciousness is swallowed up by the darkness. Nah, Bashugo came in last second and saved her. Toji's not dead. I won't believe it. Their small bodies are clad in bloodstained religious attire. Fresh smell of blood reaches my nostrils. My god, these are... I recognize them straight off because their eyes have been gouged out. It's, it's the twin girls, right? Koyakin Seri, yep. Two girls lying dead in front of me are none other than the former Yukishiro employees. Why are they here? No, I already partially know the answer to that question. Anna Majaku had complained about them to me before. These two girls had fallen prey to Senri, run away from the Yukishiro, and started living in the church as priestesses. So one thing I still don't know. Why were they murdered? I'm guessing when Otoa saw something she shouldn't have, so did the girls, so all three had to be taken care of. My theory has been completely debunked. Why on earth would they have to murder these two girls? However, I have no time to consider the implications behind this, as the sound of footsteps suddenly breaks the silence. It's quick of footsteps walking down the empty hallway. My thought process is rudely interrupted. There's a very good chance that the footsteps belong to him, however there's nowhere to hide in this austere room. As they stand there petrified, the origin of these footsteps appears out of the darkness. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Arashima? His voice echoes around the room. It's a deep, intellectual-sounding voice I know very well. I was fucking... You better be here to help me, you son of a bitch. I swear to God. I was... See, I had second thoughts when I saw you in that cafe, and you were like, Yo, oh, I can't believe all this shit's going on. Oh my god, no, you are in on it. You are in on it. I told you everything about what Shigusa Tokiko had said. I told you everything about what she had said. You're like, I gotta step out for a moment. You stay here. You don't follow me. You stepped outside. You made a, you fucking made a little phone call, didn't you? To make sure Tokiko would be taken care of by this time Shugo got back, right? You decided to make a little phone call. Because that's why you asked... And you ask specifically, so you're, he's like, oh, so there's no one in that house, except Kazuna and Tokiko? Because you wanted to know what the situation was. You want to know what kind of defenses you were dealing with. Arashima, you son of a bitch. I could tell by some of your reactions when I started telling you, like, the truth of what Tokiko had told us. I knew by some of your fucking reactions you were in on this shit. I knew it. You're not here to help me. No, 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 you're not here to help me. I don't believe it. I'm going to be more shocked if he's actually here to help me. What are you doing here, Arashima-san? Careful not to let my guard down in spite of what I'm asking. He's acting entirely on his own, without having brought along a partner. Arashima-san's appearance here is highly suspicious. I'm not quite sure I believe that. <laughs> Arashima-san lets out a merry chuckle. With his right hand stuck in his coat pocket, Arashima-san casually enters the room. He glances over at the two corpses and chuckles as though amazed. Don't give me a break. I think you know perfectly well who killed these two, Arashima-san. For a split second, I'm at a loss for words. However, I've already figured out the answer. I've pondered it countless times. It's even made me doubt myself. I have the confidence I have my conclusion is unshakable. So I'll open my mouth and give him my answer. Arashima-san. You're the mastermind behind all the murders Senri has committed these past few weeks. Silence. Arashima-san's face remains impassive. You bezeled all of Senri's secret funds, then murdered Shikusa Tokiko, who dared to show defiance. Now you're trying to erase the existence of Senri itself before everything gets publicized. Oh, you didn't You didn't do it yourself, but you made a little phone call. You made a little ring ring. Sure, that's what it may look like on the surface. However, it's obviously a setup. You just want to lump all the blame for Senri's crimes onto Shikusa Tokyo and Aka Ikma. Yeah, that's a 
お前の部屋には光月カズナ以外出入りは確認されていないそれともお前は私と光月カズナが結託してシグザトキコを殺したとでも言うつもりか you, you inspired with her twin double, which I would imagine bears a striking resemblance to Kazna, so that some punk, young punk ass who's just watching a door would be like, oh hey, it's the girl. I guess you could say that in a way. Consider this, of the person who entered the room was not Kazna, but another person altogether. Oh. I'll just grins happily after he hears that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will. I'm kind of creeped out by how relaxed Arashima-san seems. I continue telling him what I've deduced. <laughs>